uh, spark an arms race, uh, it really redefined the possibilities of technology. Um, and as he pushes towards uh, general or AI, I should say artificial general intelligence, we're forced to grapple with some very big questions about the future of work, about the balance of power, about ethical questions and so many other things. And we're going to delve into all of that with Sam. So thank you, uh, the man at the center of it all. Thanks Great for having to me. See you. Um, so here's where I want to start. Two years ago, almost to this week, basically, you launched ChatGPT. And I think it's fair to say that when you press the button, since then, all hell has broken loose. <laughs> um, you know, it uh, does feel like that. It has changed the global conversation. It has changed fundraising, priorities, the move of resources. Other technology companies have shifted the way uh, they're doing things. Uh, there have been lawsuits, uh, all of it. And so I'm, I'm very curious if you could just take us back two years ago, literally almost, as I said, to the day or to the week, and what you thought was going to happen when you press the button. So in the abstract, we always knew there would be some moment where, for whatever reason, like, the world would go from not getting it to getting it, and that all of a sudden it would be clear that this technology was working. Like, internally, it, at that point, seemed very obvious to us uh, that language models were going to keep scaling, that they were going to do all these useful things. And why it happened at the launch of ChatGPT, I mean, I have some theories, but why it happened then and not when we launched the GPT-3 and the API earlier, or why it didn't happen until GPT-4 launched several months later, like why that exact moment, I think there is some like chanciness to when it actually catches fire. Um, we had observed, though, with the API, and GPT-3 that, you know, GPT-3 was a little bit early and it didn't work for that many things. But in some sense, one of the killer use cases of it was developers in the playground, which is where you could like test ideas quickly before you implement the API. They love just talking to the model. They would just sit there and like talk to GPT-3 conversationally about whatever. And that was kind of the main thing people were using it for. So we said, well, if that's what people want, we can make it much easier to use. You don't have to sign up for a developer account and do all these other things. And we can sort of tune it to be good at conversations. Right. And so we said, okay, let's make this as a product. Now, we'd actually been planning to launch it with GPT-4. We finished GPT-4 in like August of 2022, um, but we held it for a while.